Oh, hey guys, just doing a spot of bird watching here. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're taking a look at the story of a small snack that turned into a feast to remember. And speaking of snacks. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh. Oh, uh, 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 no, 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 uh-oh. No, 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 Hey, guys. Welcome to Story Lab. I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. This month, we're talking about how everything we have is a gift from God. So we can give freely to others. Special delivery for Carter. It's here. Uh, uh, Carter, ca Carter? Hey, um, uh, it's, uh, so today, um, hey, watch, watch this. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is pretty easy. Let's go higher. Whoa. What are you doing? You left me hanging here. Sorry, man. Look, I'm just so excited about this gift that I ordered for my little cousin. Well, let's see. Well, see, his family is going on this epic road trip to the national parks, and I just wanted him to have something fun to take a picture with at each stop. Oh, cool, like a superhero action figure or a giant candy bar or, or a pigeon? A pigeon. You mean a rat of the sky. First off, rude. And second, this isn't just any pigeon, this is a homing pigeon. Humans and homing pigeons have a very special relationship. What do you mean? You see, thousands of years ago in ancient Egypt, humans used homing pigeons to deliver letters over long distances. So, bird mail? Yep. Homing pigeons were even used in ancient Greece to deliver the results of the Olympics. Oh. For the gold! Homing pigeons have even saved lives. This pigeon named Sher Ami saved hundreds of soldiers during World War I by flying straight through enemy lines to deliver a message. He got a medal of bravery for it. That's even better than Olympic gold. But how do the pigeons know where to go? Homing pigeons navigate by landmarks, the position of the sun, and a little thing called magneto reception. Magnet. <laughs> Magneto! Not quite. Magneto reception means homing pigeons can sense the magnetic field of the Earth and use it for direction. They can be trained to carry a message to a specific place hundreds of miles away. Wow! Who knew pigeons were so cool? This is definitely the right road trip companion for your cousin. Hey, let's take our own road trip first! I don't think we have time for that in one episode. I have a plan. Well then, let's do it! Time for our own virtual road trip with a little movie magic. 
I've got my camera and I'm ready to see the world! First up, in the Peach State, Atlanta! Home of the busiest airport in the U.S. Perfect! Oh, are we gonna fly? Straight across the Atlantic Ocean! Oh, I wonder if we'll see any whales! Perfect! <laughs> oh, that's the Berlin Cathedral in Germany! Oh, guten Morgen, mein Freund! Perfect! Oh, I know this one! Um, It's Timbuktu oh. and Mali! The Sahara! Oh. Architecture is super cool! Perfect! Oh, that's the famous lotus pond in oh. Taiwan! Oh, so much to see! Amazing! Oh man! Who knew a gifted pigeon could make such a cool and fun side quest? Speaking of giving, it's time for... The Story Before the Story! Today, we're in the book of 1 Kings, which picks up right where 2 Samuel leaves off, at the end of King David's life. Everything had started off great with the glorious reign of David's son, King Solomon. But toward the end of Solomon's life, things began to fall apart. A short time later, the kingdom split in two. After that, most of the kings who ruled God's people were kind of terrible. And King Ahab was one of the worst. He led the people far from God. So God raised up a prophet named Elijah. Elijah warned that because Ahab had turned away from God, the land would experience a time of no rain. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everybody, I'm Brian, and I gotta set the scene for today's epic story. See, King Ahab had been an absolute train wreck for Israel, leading the people to worship the false god, Baal. But then Elijah showed up to confront him. I serve the Lord. He is the God of Israel. You can be sure that there won't be any dew or rain on the whole land during the next few years. It won't come until I say so. You, you impertinent knave. As you can imagine, Ahab was not happy with Elijah. The false god Baal was supposed to control the weather, and when all the rain stopped, it meant that the one true god was more powerful than Baal. Elijah needed to escape from Ahab's anger, so God sent Elijah east to hide in a place called the Kirith Valley. God said, You will drink water from the brook. I have directed some ravens to supply you with food. So during the time of no rain, Elijah drank from the stream and received his food from a flock of ravens every morning and every evening. You might call his meal delivery service Bird Dash. <laughs> But meanwhile, outside Elijah's hidden valley, the land was in trouble. With no rain, wells began to dry up, the crops failed, life was hard for everyone, but especially for a widow in the town of Zarephath. Gather sticks and fan the flame, bread's all gone, who's to blame? Now at this time, if a woman's husband died, she had no way to support herself or her children, and during a time of famine, survival was nearly impossible. I mean, this widow was in desperate trouble. The drought was so bad that even Elijah's brook finally dried up. God told him, Go right away to Zarephath. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. Okay, now if I was Elijah, I would have a lot of questions. First off, Zarephath was in enemy territory. Second, Zarephath was about 85 miles away. And third, as we've seen, a widow would be the last person to have extra food to share. But Elijah trusted God, and he made the long, hot journey. And when Elijah arrived, he found the widow gathering sticks for firewood. I've been traveling for days, and I'm so thirsty. Would you bring me a little water? Well, yes, all right. As the widow started to leave, Elijah called out, Please bring me a piece of bread, too. Now, we know the widow had almost nothing. This was a big ask. I don't have any bread. All I have is a small amount of flour and a little oil. I'm gathering sticks to take home for a fire. Then I'll make one last meal for me and my son. And after that, well... The widow had no way to get more flour or more oil, so she and her son had no chance of survival. But Elijah knew what God had told him. Don't be afraid. Go home and make some bread. Bring me a small loaf, and then you and your son eat the rest. The Lord says the jar of flour will not be used up. The jug will always have oil in it. 
until the day the Lord sends rain. We don't know what the widow thought about this. What Elijah said must have sounded crazy, but she chose to go and do it. She shared her bread with Elijah and had enough left for a meal with her son. And the next day... Look, there's flour here. I know, I used it up yesterday. Quick, bring me that jug. There's oil too. Just like Elisha said. <laughs> we can have breakfast, lunch, dinner. Second breakfast, elevensies, afternoon tea. From that day on, the jar of flour and the jug of oil always stayed full enough to provide food for the next meal. And for the rest of the drought, Elijah, the widow, and her son had food to eat, just as the Lord had promised. The end. You know, I've always wanted a bottomless jar of that the chocolate hazelnut stuff. Mmm, or a never-ending box of pizza. Truth is, we often forget what we do have. So, what's our part in the story? Well, it's easy to compare yourself to other people and feel like you don't have much. But even if you don't have a lot of stuff, like the widow in our story, you can still be generous. And generosity is making someone's day by giving something away. <laughs> that rhymes. Yeah. No matter who you are, God has given you things that you can share with others. That could be food. Like uh, if your friend forgot their lunch and you share half your sandwich with them. Or you gave your extra water bottle to a teammate at soccer practice. Often though, what you have to give is more than food. Yeah, it could be like giving a listening ear to your grandpa when he tells you the exact same story for the ninth time in a row. Or pausing to give a smile to the crossing guard. That's right. You can give your time. Your energy. Your encouraging words. Even your good attitude. Jesus showed us amazing ways to give. He was constantly traveling and hardly owned anything, but he always had kindness and help to offer the people around him. No matter who you are or what's going on, God has given you something that you can share with others. Hey, Brian, thanks for giving us your time. You are most welcome. See you next time. So, here's the thing. You always have something to give. Hey, you want to help me arrange the photos from our trip? You know it. Georgia is first. Okay. Um, was Taiwan before or after Germany? Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. Um, I think Germany was first. Or was it after? See, I, I can't take you seriously. What do you mean? <laughs>